drown sorrows, there is an ocean deeper than fear, the tide is rising, rising. to United to Maplewood United Methodist Church. Um, sorry when somebody starts running to the back of the church as fast as they can. I have to figure out whether I need to do something about it. So I think we're okay. Glad to have you here for worship. I'm sure you're glad you didn't have to decide whether you were staying home or getting out in the cold. And happy Valentine's Day to everybody. We hope that this service will bless your heart and give you joy throughout the week as we go forward. Some of the things that are happening right now is we are getting ready to start in-person worship again next week. It is with all of the precautions, meaning that we will be wearing masks throughout the whole time that we're in the building. You will be seated at at least a six foot distance from each other. So that means we do have limited seating in that time. But some of what I want you to hear is I, I know we're not all on the same page on mass or that we really want it to be back the way it used to be. Some of what I want to do is encourage you to come if you're comfortable being in a place with other people and being in worship because some of what we have been the struggle in all of this is figuring out who's ready to come back and who isn't and what that means to what we need to make for arrangements so that everybody who wants to be in-person worship has the opportunity to be in-person worship. So we hope that you'll start 
trickling back if you're comfortable and we'll keep the precautions in place to make it as safe as we possibly can and your attendance if you're ready to be back will help us figure out as we proceed with those next steps. Some of what we know at this point with the pandemic is we're not going to wake up tomorrow and it's safe to just go back to doing everything we used to do the way we used to do it. It's going to be a kind of gradual moving towards that and we're just trying to figure out how to navigate that in a way that keeps people safe but also moves back to that place where we can be together and feel each other's love in that sense of being together and not through virtual stuff all of the time, but we have to do that in a kind of measured way. Some of the things that I want to lift up to you this morning are that Lent is starting. Wednesday is the official Ash Wednesday service. We will be live streaming an Ash Wednesday service at 7 p.m., and then that will be on the web website and on Facebook for you to view if you can't join us live. The other thing is that some of this being really close with each other all the time is one of those places we're not quite ready to go to, but thought, I know that those symbols and something we can touch, those moments are matter, so we're going to have this card with the ashes on burlap will be taped to the outside of the doors and windows so that on your way to work, you can stop and get one, um, keep it in your pocket throughout Lent or throughout the day, place it on your table throughout the season, whatever, it will be available and I will try to make sure that they're out there Tuesday night so if you're going to work at 4 a.m. you can still stop and get one and we'll have them through the evening service available for people to pick up. I, I have invited you through the newsletter to take some time to not just have that be a run and grab, but to be indeed a moment that is holy for you and a sign of this new season that we are walking into. I think those are all the announcements that I need to. Let us enter into worship as we share together in the invocation. As we gather, we call out to you, our God who has brought us together as your hands and feet in this world. May the distance disappear as we join together in worship. By your spirit, gather us in the circle of your love so that no matter how far apart we are, we know the blessing of our connection. Let our worship reflect our love for you and the joy on our faces and the openness of our hearts that we will be renewed and encouraged. Let us be like seeds scattered on good soil, that this time of uncertainty and distance will bear fruit for your kingdom ten times, twenty times, a hundred times. In the name of Jesus Christ, we call out and invite you in. Our first song today is called The Stand. Sim 
next song is called Go Light Your World. Did you say the screen loved it? We do give thanks for the beautiful music that we're having today. One of the things as we enter into this prayer time, remember that in the attempt to kind of allow us to both those that are with us present here and those that are 
at a distance to be able to share, as has been the tradition here, to lift up particular prayer concerns during the prayer time. I'm inviting you to post those on the prayer wall in our Maplewood UMC app. Um, one I want to lift up this morning in that whole sense of glad you didn't have to get out. We want to lift up Jacob, who has been our sound person here, who um, spun out on his way here to service and isn't able to be with us here. The good news is that he wasn't physically hurt. Um, the fun news or not so fun news that any of us that have had an accident know that he's probably pretty sh shaken up and his car was pretty damaged. So we just want to keep him in our prayers. And some of this, folks, is about permission. Some of, I know that most of us in some ways have gotten used to just sharing everybody's information. One of the things I've learned as a pastor in this journey is not everybody wants everybody to know what's happening with them. So I am trying to keep that balance. With that, I lift up to you those on our prayer list. We have some that are going for that first round of finding out if their treatments made a difference. And I want us to lift them up and pray and be with them as they go through finding that out this week. For others, surgeries were put on hold and they continue struggling with pain and those pieces, so I invite you to lift them up. We also have some blessings of healing that's happening that are going to make it so surgery doesn't have to come. And so we're glad for those and glad to all be together. So not getting any other prayer concerns lifted up at this time, I invite you to enter into the spirit of prayer. Holy God, we come before you in worship. We fall before you as the one we know who has the power, the courage, and the strength. The one that has shown us the way to true life with abundance and hope. We come to you, O oh God, as your children, who of you have made worthy by your love. And we come with one voice, O oh God, lifting up those in our hearts Indeed, thank you for keeping Jacob safe, but holy God, also surround him as he faces all that comes. Protect him and help us to surround him with your love as well. For those that are facing surgery this week or in the near future, O oh God, we know the frustrations of wanting to be healed the pain that can come and wear us out. 
Be with them, O God. Take away the pain. Bring healing and hope. For those facing those questions of what's next, how did we do? Holy God, surround them. Keep them safe and give healing into their lives. And Holy God, I also stand here as someone who just keeps seeing how tough this time is for each of us, whether teachers or students, whether hospital workers or street workers, whether those who are retired or those that are just starting their jobs. This time of this pandemic has disrupted almost everything we know and leaves us feeling adrift sometimes, uncertain and unsure. Holy God, help us to cling to you, to know that the rock beneath our feet is solid and gives us hope. For a country and a world that continues in turmoil, Holy God, help us indeed be a light that brings love into the midst of all of it. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next song is called Prince of Peace. Um, it's a new one to us, and it's going to feature Shauna on vocals. Come death or 
shadow, God, I know your life will meet me there. When fear comes knocking, there you'll be my God. When day breeds trouble, there you'll hold my heart. Come storm. Thank you so much. So our passage this morning comes from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And it is, even as I'm talking about liminal time, this is that one that we kind of expect as we head into Lent. Then the Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Jesus fasted for 40 days and night. After this, he was very hungry. The devil came to Jesus to tempt him, saying, If you are the Son of God, tell these rocks to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written in the scriptures, A person lives not on bread alone, but on everything God says. Then the devil led Jesus to the holy city of Jerusalem and put him on the high place of the temple. And the devil said, If you are the Son of God, jump down, because it is written in the scriptures, He has put his angels in charge of you. They will catch you in their hands so that you will not hit your foot on a rock. Jesus answered him, it also says in scripture, do not test the Lord your God. Then the devil led Jesus to the top of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their splendor. The devil said, if you will bow down and worship me, I will give you all these things. Jesus said to the devil, go away from me, Satan. It is written in scripture, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So the devil left Jesus and angels came and took care of him. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. Now I have to tell you that some of the reason that I'm focusing on liminal time in this time is that indeed we've been entering into it as leaders, but in a bigger sense, one of the things that resonated about the idea of liminal time was that we were thrown into it in this pandemic. And liminal time, if you remember, is that time in between something ending and the next thing not yet having become clear or having started. And When I look to scripture, I see all of these places of liminal time and some the people kind of fall into and some, like Jesus, seems very intentional about entering into this liminal time. And I'll tell you that that was some for me back at the beginning after we'd been in it a couple months and it looked like it, it would be at least a couple more, was how do I use this time to intentionally get closer to God? 
to intentionally strengthen my faith and let go of some of the things that I've been dragging with me that I have just been dragging with me. And when we come to this scene in Scripture, we come to a place where we haven't paid a whole lot of attention necessarily, but Jesus' life as a carpenter's son, Jesus' time as Mary and Joseph's son who's learning the trade to be a carpenter is coming to, has come to an end as he is baptized. And these 40 days in the middle here are what happens, that liminal space, before his ministry starts to take shape. And I think about how these 40 days clearly help Jesus gain that focus to claim who he's going to be and to have the ability to see where God is and where God isn't. To me, that is also the purpose of Lent. And I, now, I grew up in a time where all you did was give up chocolate. My sister always gave up butter, which some of the struggle with that is if you have to eat potatoes every meal, I'm not eating them without butter. But that wasn't, the purpose wasn't just to lose weight or to give up something you love, because the truth is, when you give up chocolate for Lent, you spend all your time either looking back and going, oh, I remember the days when I could eat chocolate, or wanting to get through Lent to the other side so you can eat chocolate again. Part of the blessings of the liminal time is actually to enter into it and recognize that going backwards isn't necessarily the right goal, and while we don't yet know what the future brings, taking time to be fully present in a way that helps us grow is a key goal. That our purpose in Lent is whether we start a Bible study or whether we give something up or whether we make time for God, the purpose is to know God better. So that when the time is over, we feel closer and our sense of where he is leading us is clearer. When we look at what happens for Jesus when he intentionally takes this time to pray, time to be quiet and present with God, is that when the devil shows up 40 days later, and 40 days in scripture, if you see what it's used, it's 40 years in the wilderness 40 days of rain, which we know, but if you read the passage, you know it adds up to way more than 40. But represents as it happened as long as it needed to happen. Jesus was in the wilderness as long as he needed to be in the wilderness to truly reach that place where he was ready to go to the next step. It's in this time while he is praying and listening to God and being fully present with God that he's going to get the clarity that helps him see when Peter goes, no, 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 come on, we don't have to go that way. You don't have to be crucified. Let's take a different route that Jesus is able to see clearly that that is not of God, even though Peter will be the very rock on which the church is built. He is able to see the difference between the pull of the Pharisees who want to say this is what God wants and you're against it to reject that and still do, still live into the ministry that is hard to do the right thing when everybody around you is saying it's something different. And I also always think of the courage it took for Jesus to stand at the end of Holy Week with the very crowd that had shouted, Hosanna to the King, with his disciples who have miraculously disappeared from his side and face the very crowd who had celebrated him at the beginning of the week, condemning him to be crucified at the end. In all of those places, even as he struggled in the garden to pray again, to re-check in with God, he had the courage to live the ministry God had called him to and all of the things that it meant because he intentionally took this time as he left behind who he had been and went forward to be 
who God had made him to be. When I thought about us entering this liminal time, it would be so easy, and I'm sure many of us are still there, so easy to have this time away from church, just counting the days until it looks like it used to look. Yet, as each day has been added to that time away, how much further from God would we be if all we did was look backwards and not look to see where is he now with us and where is he calling us to go. It's part of the reason that we as leaders were invited to be part of leadership discussions and talking about this very thing, is to be intentional so that when the way forward starts to show itself, that we have the courage and the, the sight to see where God is leading us. And I also think that when it comes to us individually, not just as a collective body, but comes to us individually, how easy it is to be distracted. To think about these things that Jesus is tempted with that we so often just take for granted. And look, I'm sorry to the chocolate industry. I'm sure I give you enough money. I pick on you all the time, but how many of us eat a piece of chocolate anytime we want to, whether we're hungry or not. Just assuming it's our right to always have whatever we want. And sometimes chocolate is chips, sometimes it's bread, sometimes it's pasta. But to think about the peace that he, Jesus says is the answer to that is to remember we don't live on all that stuff alone. If we're going to have true life, if we're going to have a life that has real meaning and a sense of our worth, then we have to live also on God's word. And I have to tell you that for me, that doesn't mean just this sermon. While I hope this sermon gives you something to think about, I also have experienced the joy of going deeper into scripture of going back to those passages that the first time I saw them, I skipped over and went, yeah, I don't know what that means. But the fifth time was the day when I needed to hear them, and all of a sudden they seemed to be in bold. I've been in those places, which I'm sure I know many of you have been in, when the bad news comes, or the hard day comes, and then that scripture that you didn't think had anything to do with you reminds you that God is present with you. That's how we are truly given hope. But to get to that place where the scripture, not the quote that's on somebody's plaque, not the voice of the how we've watered it down, but the very word of God feeds us as it comes into those places, but we first have to take the time to listen and to hear and to pay attention. And how often have I heard the, I'll come to church when God cures me of, or I'll come to church when life gets a certain way. The devil says to Jesus, here's the thing, you're the son of God, jump. Prove that God loves you. We don't always have the proof in our lives being exactly the way we want it. Many times it's easier to look and see that it doesn't fit and we want to test and check. Is God real? God is real. He did this amazing thing through Christ to show us his love. And as much as the first two might tempt us a lot, the last one distracts us almost completely most of the time. All the riches of the world, all the things that we could have that might for a minute make us feel special, yet in reality give us nothing. 
I always get to that part and think that Jesus probably had the easiest time going, yeah, no, I don't need to bow down to you because I'm God. It's all mine anyway. Yet it's harder for us. But Jesus says to us, here's the thing to know. You are a child of God. And he loves you completely. I think that when we enter in intentionally to Lent in the sense of seeking God's face and seeking that confidence, then we come out of the 40 days not just looking forward to going back to the way we used to live or hoping that we're somehow miraculously cured of liking chocolate, but that we come out the other side clearer about who God is clearer about who he's called us to be and with the courage to live into it. We as leaders of Maplewood will continue to be intentional about using this liminal time to discuss, to compare, to hear God's voice so that as we map our way forward that we'll be guided by that courage, guided by that clarity of vision and with that understanding that our ministry and mission is tied to God. I also invite you in this that Lent will not be the end of the pandemic or our time in this journey. I invite you to enter into this liminal time intentionally. To not just see it as something to bear, to get through not just spending it wishing to go back to the way it used to be, but as a time when you can let go of the things that are holding you down, to gain the courage and the insight. I said this morning during Zoom communion, one of the realities is the world is changing faster every year. I have met people who in their lifetime, their lifetime of memories started before there was electricity inside houses or indoor plumbing. Before everybody owned a car and relied on their feet or a horse. And I think about all of the changes that happened just as they got to that place where those things, electricity and cars and Plumbing became realities that we all just took for granted. And then I think about a young man when I bought my car. And, he sa and I said, I actually graduated from college before the computers were on everybody's desk at work. And he looked at me and said, you mean laptops? No, I mean the PCs. And he looked at me like that was, he had never even heard of such a thing. The world is changing really quickly. One of the things that doesn't change is God's love for us. But it becomes important for us as we walk through the changes that this world brings to be intentional. To be intentional about securing that we are indeed living by God's word that we are indeed seeing clearly who God is and who God isn't. So that when somebody comes up to us and says, come on, I got a good plan, we'll know the difference between something of this world and something of God. Will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, the world continues to spin. New ideas enter it every moment. Help us, O oh God, to see clearly that your love pulls us through all of it with hope and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. As we get ready for our closing song, I just want to remind you that God is good all, all the, the time, time. And all the time, God is, good. God is good. Our closing song today is, This is Amazing Grace.
sing for all that you've done for me.